Welcome to the MPL Goal Show, the show where we bring you all the goals in action across the Northern Premier League. We start at unbeaten Ashton United, who look to keep their momentum going against Workington. A back post header from Lewis White gave them the lead just before half time. And it was another ball to the back post that led to their second too. Tom Denton knocked down for Darius Ose to poke home, doubling their advantage. And Denton went from provider to goal scorer in second half added time, tapping home from six yards. It's three goals and three points for the Robins. As Geisley took on FC United of Manchester, your commentary comes from the home side. Now Johnson comes forward, plays it into the path of Farrell. Farrell one on one with the kick. Yeah! Farrell right footed, opens the scoring. Grabs his first. United looking to a draw back level in the remaining six minutes plus added of this half, and they may well do. Fitzmartin breaks into the area, it's right footed, and Jay Fitzmartin levels the scoring for FC United, and on 30. Okay, cross goes in, it's towards Johnson who wins. Yeah! The and Gabriel Johnson puts the Lions back in front. But that he did. And now Adam LaFondra has a chance to pull his side level for the second time this afternoon. LaFondra versus Cracknell. LaFondra steps up right footed. Uh, puts it into the bottom right hand corner. And on 56 minutes, it's guys the two for another throw, this time a few yards further forward. We've gone from making good choices all the time to making bad choices. Now Farrell. Farrell into the area. It's Leo Farrell. Yeah! It dropped to Farrell. Hyde United had a tough set of bank holiday fixtures against two of the early pace setters. Before heading to Macclesfield on Monday, they took on Stockton Town. They started well, with Drew Baker nodded in after the first effort hit the post. The league's top scorer, Jack Redshaw, got in on the act just before half time. He latched onto the end of a long ball, and his finish into the far corner earned him his fifth of the season. And the hosts didn't slow down in the second half either. A bit of pressure from Stockton Town was well beaten. And as was the Stockton Town defence, and Nathan Harker in the Stockton goal. The away side did get one back from a set piece. Our young pure all rose highest to nod home and give the away side a glimmer of hope towards the end of the game. But Hyde restored their three goal lead in added time. A devastating counter attack from a Stockton set piece. It started with Connor Heath. And it finished with Connor Heath. Bamber Bridge earned an important point in midweek against high flying Ashton United. They started well against Ilkston too. They took the lead after Max Kane latched onto the end of a low cross. Ilkston battled back, however, and equalised 14 minutes later. Thomas Kirsten's getting on the end of a lovely little bit of play. Leveling things up yet again after equalising against Macclesfield and FC United of Manchester in their last two games. And he scored what proved to be the winner just past the hour mark. He scored the last five goals for his club. And that delicate flick over the keeper gave Ilkston a good win after consecutive draws. Lancaster City are unbeaten in the league this season, but have drawn all but one of their four games. They took the lead against 10-man Matlock, after Dominic Lawson prodded home off the post.
Matlock had scored once all season before this afternoon. After today, their joint top scorer would be their goalkeeper, after 18-year-old Rogan Ravenhill came up for a late corner and earned inside a point. It's four straight draws for the hosts after their opening day win against Baseford United. Leek Town hosted Gainsborough Trinity and took the lead after 20 minutes when Oliver Harrison roves highest from a Brendan Daniels corner. They held a lead into the second half but were unable to clear a bouncing ball in the penalty area. Lewis Butroyd found himself open at the back post and leveled things up. The game was heading to a draw, but up stepped Will Lancaster in the 93rd minute. His header from the long throw secured all three points, sending the travelling fans into raptures. Warrington Rylands travel to Morpeth Town searching for their first league win this season. Your commentary comes from Morpeth. Really well. Finds firm in the field. No, Morpeth midfield is really getting back. Fenton John out to the right and hard castle, low and flat towards the box. Should be in. And it's in. Hey, the goal has been coming. It's number 15. Ball played down the right hand side, and the Sanka's going to get there, right side of the penalty area. One mile tries to wrestle with him, played back, chance to make it two. In off the post, it is two. They, they could concede another here. They've gone out to the right hand side, and Ben Huff, chance to cross into the area. It's deflected to Will Scott. In the back of the net, it's very well. And Jake Burton scored a third, and this is going from bad to worse. Unbeaten Macclesfield travel to Whitby Town, looking to build on their one-all draw with Ilkston in midweek. Tom Clare headed in to put his side 1-0 up. Clare was at the double later that half as well. A well-worked 1-2 down the right side fashioned the chance. And when Whitby couldn't clear the ball in, Clare poked home at the back post. Almost as soon as Tom Clare was substituted off, Whitby got a goal back. This time it was the away side who didn't deal with the ball in, and Joseph Gibson struck home from the edge of the area. Macclesfield immediately restored their two goal advantage however, John Rooney found himself in space in the box and sent a chipped attempt to the back post. Shot or across, it didn't matter. Macclesfield were back in the driver's seat. Macclesfield were given a bit of a scare when Stephen Walker dispatched from 12 yards, but Robbie Savage's side held on to make it four wins and five. Worksop were the entertainers in midweek, scoring eight past Matlock Town. There were no goals in the opening half against Blythe Spartans though, and when they came, it was by way of the winless away side, Billy Gordon firing in a perfect volley into the top corner. Worksop were able to level things up shortly after though, as they turned defence into an attack from a Blythe Spartans free kick. The long ball over the top was pressed well by Jordan Burrow, who got his reward with an assist. Liam Hughes the beneficiary, who finished well off the crossbar. The game was starting to liven up with 20 minutes left, and Blythe regained their lead. The away side had drawn three of their opening four, and after Gomez Carrington drove the ball forward, he was able to get on the end of a loose parry to turn the ball in himself. Blythe Spartans were 20 minutes away from their first win of the season. The 
home side weren't ready to give up just yet though, and once again equalised from Liam Hughes. He slid to latch onto the end of a Jay Rollins cross and tapped home from inside the six yard box. The home side would take the lead for the first time in the afternoon, three minutes later. Hughes completed his hat-trick with a trademark header past Harrison Bond. And Worksop managed to secure the win three minutes from time. Another cross undid the Blythe defence as Burrow peeled to the back post to not home. But they weren't done there just yet, as Luke Hall got it on the goal-scoring act in added time. A ruthless finish from Hall, and a 5-2 win, meaning the Worksop have scored 13 goals in their last two games.